huge. Right, you know right. how he got the number again, 1968, 69. Sure. I mean, it's gonna be. It's like, hey, can I get the number from Mo Howard? And they're like, oh yeah, Elroy uh, four four nine seven. What? <laughs> KL five nine nine two eight. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, whenever they're in that recording studio, you gotta you gotta think that most of the people there were like, this is gonna be from some fucking shit right here. Well, dude, and then John Cale's on the next track. Um, we uh, we will fall, and that was a that was a thrown together one because it was a um, it was wasn't it uh, Dave Alexander that kind of came up with the whole it's concept a, it's for a, it? Yeah, it's a mantra. It's a chant that they made into. And Iggy points this out in the documentary that without this song, it wouldn't really. It'd be just a bunch of. He the same thinks songs. Yeah. He thinks this song kind of makes it special, and it does because it's a really it's a different song. You have John Cale on the uh, the uh, violin doing his freaking weird it's shit buzz saw-y. it's 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 just in and your it's face. a chant and the drums are um cool um, tribal just m- mystical and it does throw you off when the first time you actually sit down and listen to the record i bought this record whenever i lived in florida it, yeah i and, see what you're saying and whenever the first time i listened to it i was like yeah i want to be your dog cool yeah, yeah yeah and then you get in this and you're like what this is a 180 on everything that you've ever heard. Yeah. But then they bring it back with no fun Ooh, right after love that. Love this one. This one's been covered a lot. Too. Oh yeah. I mean, um, I think uh, the Sex Black Pistols. the Black Keys did a cover of it, and they released it on Record Store Day with a copy of the original one on the other side. It was like a B side, oh, okay. A side deal, which is, I, I would still like to find that one just to see what they did with it. Um, um, track three though is kind of cool if you put like headphones on and like stare in the stars late at night and like smoke a joint or something. That's like what it is. Yeah. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it's just, really cool. It's and, a lot of tambourine. And shit. Yeah, you'll just. Yeah, I mean, if you listen to it, if you've never listened to it, we are gonna. Um, you should be hearing some snippets. Throw little on. snippets. Yeah, kind of on the inside here. Um, just because there's so many different things uh, to go with this, you know. Um, when, Sorry, but uh, no fun. Yeah, yeah, I love that one. I was listening to it just when I got here. I mean, yeah, was, uh, whenever you hit no fun, you're kind of taking off into second gear, third gear, fourth gear. Yeah. You know, there's a twelve gear car coming up. You know what I mean? Um, and then you hit real cool time. Real cool time has those kind of those those chanting kind of lyrics as, mm-hmm. as well, and he's just screaming most of the time, and you can he- just hear his screams on a lot of the stuff. You can hear him screaming in the background, and everything's just so, again, primal yeah. with the whole thing. Um, when you get to Anne, Anne is a really cool song because it's got a really cool bass riff. Yeah, I like the um, drums on it, too. The drums, everything's awesome on it. Um, you get to Not Right, and what they say about Not Right is they wrote Not Right in the Chelsea Hotel. They stayed there. While they were there, and the Chelsea Hotel is famous for all kinds of all people. Kinds of things. Like Sid Vicious sure. got and his Nancy's deal there. Death. Yeah, Nancy was killed there. Um, all kinds of crazy everyone shit. stayed there, like in the right. day. Yeah, the just uh, and they wrote that song. They went back into the studio, and the first time they played it was the first track that you hear. Yeah, because remember they only had four songs, so they're right. like the record producers, like uh, we need more. Um, <laughs> all right, well I guess we're gonna go write like a couple more, and then they come back and this. They record that one on the spot, and that's one of my favorite songs, if not my favorite song in the whole record, is Not Right. I just love the way that riff is just so angular. It's so in I your face, it. too. Yeah, and then you get you wrap it up with Little Doll, and it's a nice fade-out for everything mm-hmm. to kind of wrap it up, but you still always want to go right back to it. It has you know, a lot of replayability. Yeah, you want to go all the way around in that whole record and listen to it again. Because it's so short... But it does take so much time to get through it. It's weird to say that, you know. Right. Runtime is short, right. but you're engrossed in it. Well, and every I'm glad. Bit of it. I'm glad they didn't go through with like what he says in the documentary that they only had the four tracks, and then in between they were going to kind of like improvise the mm-hmm. riffs or whatever he said. So it would have been kind of more like the track three, like the We Will Fall thing. Yeah, yeah. They and had I, a lot of jamming in it. Just well, and I, I'm glad they didn't do that because putting that one track in there makes it special. And I think eight's a nice number, a nice round number to have for a, an album and especially their first album. Especially a debut right. debut record, mm-hmm. which, of course, whenever it came out, didn't sell that well. No, Well, no, but they played it no. live all over the place, which bands do. You know, and they, they went to New York. They made this kick-ass album that has... Influenced so many other riffs and different kind of um, guitar playing and drum playing, and just the the um, the the combination of the two together. Well, yeah, the, the go, bands you, making music. Yeah, I mean, I just <laughs> feel like this album without this wouldn't there wouldn't be so much not there. I've heard the word sure. proto punk thrown around. I don't really like that word, but it like I can see a lot of people listening to this and being like, yes. 
When you first hear because it, it's so awesome. It's almost like Devo. When you listen to Devo, you yeah. either get it or you don't get it. Yeah. The Stooges, you get it whenever you listen to it, but is it going to stick with you? And and I and I've heard uh, like Jello Biafra describe how most of the punk bands that he knew formed, it was all of the people in their small towns loved the Stooges. And they would move to a bigger city, and they would get there, and they would find other Stooges fans, right. and then they would start bands. And then those bands created the whole punk scene and everything like that because right. they had that. They had that rock. And, and of course, you had, you know, all, I guess most of the New York punk rock scene was 100% all about the Stooges. You know, I mean, yeah, those dude. people love the Stooges. They covered them all the time, you know, the dictators. I feel uh, like after the Velvet Underground, it kind of moved into the Stooges. If you yeah, 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 yeah. In the Velvet Underground, you can see a lot of influence. They, yeah, they collaborated on and yeah. stuff. But, I mean, you, can, you can see that with a lot of their, again, with their fuzziness and their, they're just their overall it was an evil tone but it was more of a like uh, it was punk rock tone you know i, I guess that's the I best way to put it way yeah to put it, but, it's kind of just burn it you know because i mean punk rock you can trace all the way back to i don't know the first bluesman almost you know they were doing something sure. different than anybody else absolutely um and they were just saying fuck the system listen to what we got to say and iggy was one of those first um people to actually come out and say fuck it you know yeah, i don't he, care what you think i'm gonna do it yeah he's very unique in that way in that a lot of what a lot of people credit as punk, I guess, you know, I always thought of it as kind of more of a lifestyle and the closest way you could get, I could think of to get to it would be someone like Iggy Pop, the way he was dressing and doing these things just to be, just to be different and cool and even and like he, do yeah. his own thing, you know, he's doing his art, he's doing, he's living his lifestyle, you know what I mean? The way, the way that, again, like I said, i um, kind of at the beginning there is like these four people, if they hadn't got together the lexicon of the way the world works almost in music now wouldn't be and there. And it's cool because they're from the yeah. Midwest, you know? Yeah, And yeah. that's the heart of America. Yeah. It's America. You know, it was, America. You know, of course, you're around Detroit, and there's a lot of influences. Like, he like he describes hearing the electric shaver and thinking, okay, that's musical. Well, or, think about all the factories. Yeah, or the factory sounds and different things like that, those big clanks and those big just, just yeah, jagged he, he, he things. He describes right? going you know? to a, a place with a, a metal press or whatever yeah. and the clank sound and... And trying to imitate that stuff. They were trying to imitate just what they heard around them. And that's one thing with Iggy is he kind of brought in those influences he saw every day. Right. You know, and he was, he's always been a great songwriter anyway. But at the same time, he was a, he's a good musician. Yeah, he's all very the way good. Around. Yeah, very good musician. Can play. He, he's he's a hell, hell of a guitar player. Which you you always forget that he's left handed. So whenever you see him playing, you're like, wait a minute, is this backwards? You know, it's kind of weird. And he did, oh, as a he, drummer, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, no, 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 as a guitar player. Oh, as a guitar you, yeah, player. You see him playing like that. I mean, he's always kind of like you know bigger than life. And Iggy Pop is such a short guy. Being bigger than life than everything right, else is right. is amazing because, again, his influence spreads. And I've seen him twice now. I wish I would have got to oh, see him with the Stooges. That's right. You have um, seen him live. But, um, I mean, every time I see him and everybody that goes with me is always like, that is like the greatest show I think I've ever seen. His right. energy Spe- has been there f- since day one. Ex- yeah, that's what I wanted to say about their performances when the Stooges came out, their self-titled album. Um, you can see some of the footage in the documentary that, you know, uh, he, he would do his crazy stuff on stage and sing the drummer just kept his head down, which I think is so cool as a drummer and the guitar player and the bass player barely moved. Yeah. It, it was like him moving all around and they're doing their own thing. Him moving created what their music came out. Exactly. Cause whenever he did his thing, like jumping around, acting like as fucking crazy as he did. The the Ashen Brothers, he says, actually just kind of came up. They actually were created at that point, too. Because before that, they were just like stoner dudes, like whatever, you know what I mean? And they really weren't they weren't serious. They liked to have the idea of the band, you know, until right. they met some chicks. And some chicks like kind of punked them a little bit. And were like, look, we're really good. And they're like, damn, we got to actually form a band, mm-hmm. you know. And then, you know, whenever he was doing his thing and being the... The primal again, you know, kind of ape like man, or just more those those jerky movements and the the and jumps, the screaming and the, and the scream the that created fight. the ashes, yeah. you know. And and Dave Alexander was such a a good backbone for the whole for the whole group. Whenever he did play that bass and that ba- those bass lines are super simple, but at the same time driving, they yeah. completely drive all that music right there. Then, you know, of course, after they kind of go through their deal, they actually get to record a second record, which is kind of, it's cool. Well, this is really cool to me because this one's in New York, and then they fly across the country in 1970 
to record Funhouse, which I fell in love with when I heard it. And um, I really, really like as much as I like the first one. It's really hard for me to just to discern, like decide which one I like more, the first one or this one. Right. It's it's hard to because you flip flop. They're different, though. They're different. When I first bought this first record, I was like, oh, my God, this is like a revelation to me. This is another group that I'm like, I want to hold dear to me. This is sacred, you know, because in, in there's not a lot of sacred things anymore. But I think with some of this music that a lot of us like, you hold that stuff so dear to you. Right. And then whenever I heard that first yeah. record, I was like, oh, my God, I got to hear the second one. You know, and then right. when I got the second one, it was like, oh, my God, this is this builds upon the first one, kicks your ass even more, doubles, doubles it up a little bit. And just it is such a it is it is a almost a West Coast record. It is. You it, know, the, when I knew when I found that out, it, it really does give you that West Coast flavor. Um, it's hard they, to describe. Too, it is right? hard to describe. They go in and he said when they recorded it, they, they set a day aside to record each one. And then they had to they get to play two live shows at the Whiskey A Go Go and two live shows at the Fillmore, which if I had a time machine, dude, <laughs> yes, I'm saying I'm going back to lots of places, but I'm definitely going back to one of those shows in 19 19- set to the whiskey show. I don't one know of those there. One because... of those there, dude, because that would be insane because they were so tight at that point they had to have been they had to have been so tight playing, playing those playing the, all those again. tracks as much as they did and then living the lifestyle that they were to come out and everybody's like holy shit you know California. and California yeah and the whiskey is like California. doors territory too right. so they go over there and they hit it and they kill it you know i mean they do such a great job the recording of the record they they even have like a entire box set of the Funhouse recording sessions, which is every piece of tape that they recorded from those entire sessions. It's like an eight disc set. Oh, insert it, Homer drool. Correct. Yeah. And it's one of those hard ones that you can find it, but you're going to be paying like 500 bucks for it. Right. You know, but it's every single track and it's every single take and it's everything that all awesome. the, all the uh, studio banter um, that's in between everything like that. But they also released a, they released a record too later on. It was kind of like the good cuts and um, it's a decent record, too, because it's just alternate versions of things. The ultimate versions are the ones that ended up on the record. Um, starting with Down on the Street, because Down on the Street is fucking amazing. Down on the Street is a uh, great way to start an album. Yeah. <laughs> I, let's just put it at that. Yeah. I'm just going to say that. Um, it's awesome. Love that song. If you listen to these back, back to back, they, do, they don't have a void in between them, but yet they flow so easily together. Because you hit Down on the Street, and then you hit Loose, because it's just like, ugh. And it's just like you you just you you kind of just you you internalize everything so much but yeah you want to just explode most of the time every time you're listening to this stuff um you get to tbi and it's just over and over again i'm gonna stop you for just a second everybody listening at home <laughs> i realize that you're only hearing brock and tyson talk <laughs> about anything and and that's perfectly fine <laughs> Let me tell you that they are m- both much more passionate about the Stooges than I am, <laughs> and that's okay. I dig it, and I'm I'm learning as you're learning, dear listener. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge that you were there, break the fourth wall a little Sorry. bit, and just get back to this. <laughs> yeah, this no, is, it's super cool, man. I'm just saying that this is our we will fall. I'm not moment. going to tell. I am not going to add anything <laughs> oh. to this conversation. Just because we're you, yeah, you're doing such a great job. Yeah. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. Back to TV. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you man. very much. For sure. Yeah. Well. You're, you're hitting our we will fall moment out of out of our podcast. <laughs> this is throwing it into something different, which makes it better. Right on. You know? Um, down TV, down TV. on the street and then loose. Then you get to TV. TV. I. It's Ooh. such a drone, too. And it just, it, I don't know. Is it just even the drone, name of it. I would think it's, this This song is in a movie. Um, have you ever seen Velvet Goldmine? Yes. Okay, so Velvet Goldmine, there's a character played. Have you ever seen Velvet Goldmine? I have not. It, um, it's a great, I saw it a long time ago. Yeah. It's um, it's a great movie. Um, I can borrow it to you. I think I have a copy of it. Oh, you do? Oh. I believe so. Bring it over uh, next time. But, um, what was I? Gonna, oh, Ewan McGregor plays an analog kind of character of, uh, like an Iggy Pop type character, like a, you know he's dancing on stage, and they play they play a cover of TVI, and it's really cool. And I love the the drum beat, but the original um, version is always going to be better. Yeah, right. And the the lyrics are awesome. The title is awesome, and the I I really like the drum beat because it has the constant snare. So tap 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 yeah. tap 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 tap. 
when you play music and then you you look at these as influences, I mean, you yes. grab so much from these, and you're like, man, if I could only make something just Steel. as good as 